Hello wonderful person, it's uh, Werner Ziegler with another bicycle tutorial. Okay guys, uh, if um, you're not sure which way your bearings are supposed to go into your bearing cups of your crank, and you don't know which way the axle is supposed to go inside your bike, if you lost track of which way it came out, so uh, most a lot of these axles, the drive side, so right here, is shorter then the, the non-drive side by about two millimeters approximately or something like that. These two axles right here, uh, they're the same distance on both sides. But they're, they're, uh, both of these are shorter than all three of these. These are all three about the same length. So um, if you measure from this uh, ring here to the end, uh, you could see these three are the same. Same as this one actually. But on the other side, it's uh, it's it's longer. So um, th this is the the left arm, right? So uh, also these axles. This one's shorter than this one, and both of these are shorter than these. So you can't just interchange as easily as you think. Uh, you need the right length of axle. Otherwise, in the middle, uh, the races look. Um, pretty much a standard. This one might be a little wider for some reason. Same as this one here. So it could be that they're uh, equidistant on, on both sides, you see. So that's kind of strange. But uh, I think the reason why these are shorter on the drive side is to compensate for all those chain rings. Okay, so um, what I also notice, if you take the axle uh, and you read the writing on it, uh, uh, so uh, if I'm facing the writing, so it says 3S here and some other stuff, the drive side would be on, on your left. So if I measure that, it's shorter on the left. So that means that this side should be the drive side. So what I'm going by as uh, my, uh, uh, like what I'm looking at is the CCM full suspension bike. So that's how it came off that bike. And also this iron horse full suspension bike so uh, both of these this is the iron horse both of these had shorter lengths on the drive side uh, so that's what I'm going by um, so uh, another thing is uh, your uh, your your uh, your bearings if you're not sure which way it's supposed to go uh, the part that is the round part goes into the cup and the side that has like a flat bar here a flat ring that's facing you or or into the the race over here so that's the way it's supposed to work you can't put it backwards that's has to be like this so um, another thing is that these nuts on on the end here uh, once what they're they're meant for is not to hold the arm uh, onto the axle it's meant to sort of press it on to a certain torque uh, and and then uh, you can actually remove these nuts and it should stay on because of the taper. So uh, if you find that your nuts are loose, don't retorque them uh, as long as they're not literally falling off because what's supposed to hold those from falling off is the end cap. So uh, don't keep torquing these. You can snug them up, but don't keep torquing over and over because it's just going to get looser and this uh, the, the, the crank arm is just going to get forced more further onto the the taper uh, and it's going to be harder to remove what I also do is I always grease these tapers you're not supposed to though it's not recommended but if you have for example an aluminum like an alloy arm uh, I think it's a good idea to to uh, lubricate this with a, a lot of grease because those uh, aluminum these alloy kind of uh, things tend to seize onto this shaft really badly uh, in the next video, I'm going to show how hard it was to remove from this iron horse. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.